Back uh, suffocate to the sports of the landscape. For almost a half a century, the BBC's broadcast schedule on a Saturday afternoon was both the starting, start, startlingly simple and comfortably unchanging. It amounted, in fact, to just a single word, one that somehow conveyed everything while telling viewers absolutely nothing. That word was grand understand. As anyone who has ever tried <coughs> explaining the idea of a landmine telephone to a uh, teenager will know the speed with which technology had shifted, had rendered a certain concept, not just redundant, but somehow alien to generation who did not directly experience them. The program grandstand falls scarily into that category from the moment it first appeared in 1958. It was a cornerstone of British broadcasting, a national institution, its bright jolly theme song burned into the country's consciousness. Its timing was consistent, grandstand was on almost every Saturday from midday until a little after 5 p.m. This content, though, was not at the grandstand, had two unveiling soccer-related elements, football <coughs> focus, a magazine-style preview of the weekend game, and the final score in which the host and the Palang sub reported track to the region live as they happened. What happened in the middle was a sort of sporting pottery, the exact opposite of on demand television. Some weekends might contain international rugby or live tennis from Wimbledon or a Formula One grand. That the Grand Prix, others, Grand Prix, others a little sooner, might bring you hot to the badminton action from Kuala Lumpur, Lumpur, a few frames of a snooker or some lawn bowling. In 2001, the BBC made a slight track to the format, sluicing up football focus and the final score as a separate identifiable entities. <laughs>